More startling news emerges about the current visitor to the House of Commons, while politicians make excuses to try and take damage control. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. And what a day it was yesterday as uh, Parliament resumed after not only the hurtful and damning presentation that we've all been led to witness over the last uh, weekend, but on Yom Kippur, no different. Uh, Parliament goes back into session where everyone, including the Conservatives, are playing damage control because not only... Is this a horrific scene of events for Canada? But we are once again the laughing stock of this country, uh, or, or on, on the world stage, I should say. This country is the laughing stock on the world stage. Um, I, I did a live stream yesterday morning through CPAC showing a lot of these ministers before question period, shifting the blame over to Ant Anthony Rota of the, uh, the House Speaker. And... Um, this is typical liberal practices, right? We've seen this with the governor general. We've seen it with every scandal that the Trudeau government has gone through. And rather than taking um, any kind of onus on what happened last week in the House of Commons, um, of course, there's obviously been some backdoor discussions with Anthony Rota that, that they've said, look, you take the fall for this. Um, the parties, you know, in desperation mode, were sinking in the polls. Um, if you take the blame, then we don't have to. Right, he's still gonna get his pension if he if he walks away. Uh, he won't have anything to worry about. He won't have any issues paying his bills or keeping his lights on. Um, but one thing that's shocked me now on Twitter, there are numerous hashtags calling out every member of Parliament that this is inexcusable for all. Now, during the House of Commons question period, we've seen parties trying to excuse themselves that they weren't aware, that they didn't know what was going on. But I, I have a little bit of a problem with that, and I want to do a little brief history lesson here on the channel, that if you had a high school education, which I'm sure that most of these MPs should or do have, some of them certainly don't behave like they do, um, but you should know these things, and these should have sent off uh, red flags immediately. You'll notice that when uh, this this disgraced officer was brought in to be admired in the middle of the House of Commons, it was stated that he fought against Russia in the Second World War for the Ukraine. Now, who fought against Russia? Well, the Axis. That should have immediately set off some red flags. Now, let's take a look at this. Here's a map of the World War II Axis and Allies. Green are allies before the attack on Pearl Harbor. So you see Canada in there, a lot of Africa. We see uh, a lot of Asia in there. Um, Australia's in there. Numerous parts of uh, Europe, including the UK. Russia remains red. Um, they were Axis and switched to Allied. And we're going to get into that. But these black, uh, these black countries are all um, Axis powers pre Pearl Harbor, while the blue are allies after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Now, what's come out, if you do a basic Google search of this um, Yaroslav uh, Hunka, um, this image pops up. This is a basic Google search, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is from a blog. A blog. One of several photos on a blog by an SS uh, Galinchia veterans group that shows uh, this disgraced soldier, the Ukrainian immigrant honored by the Canadian Parliament during a visit by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on the 22nd of September. Uh, he's front row and middle, so front and center for everybody. And I wanted to get into this excerpt. During the Nuremberg trials, the International Military Tribunal declared the Waffen-SS to be a criminal organization responsible for mass atrocities, including persecution and uh, deletion of people of religious beliefs. Again, folks, understand I replaced these words because YouTube's um, censors pick up on these things. It demonetizes videos. Um, so, so please excuse that. I'm not trying to be um, disrespectful to any of these terms, but you can't use 
the other N word and you can't you can't say a lot of things. So anytime I'm censoring what I'm saying, just understand this is for YouTube. Um They've done this in camps, excesses of administration, uh, occupied territories, the administration of uh, a labor program, and the mistreatment and uh, offing of prisoners. After the war, thousands of these soldiers were allowed to resettle in the West, around 2,000 of them in Canada. By then, the unit was universally known as the 1st Ukrainian Division. So again, if you knew your history... If you if you knew and, and I don't want to say that people should know divisions, people should know what what infantry units are, which units. Again, the statement was made that this man fought for Ukraine against the Russians. And people could argue, well, when <laughs> when did Russia join the the allies in World War Two? Well, let's take a look. June 22nd, 1941. So very early in the war. Let's do another history lesson from Britannica. The surprise German invasion of the USSR began on June 22nd. The Soviets, during their hasty retreat, shot their political prisoners and, whenever possible, evacuated personnel, dismantled and removed industrial plants, and conducted a scorch earth policy. Uh, dismantling buildings and installations, destroying crops and food reserves, and flooding mines, at almost 4 million people were evacuated east of uh, Urals. Or Earls, sorry, uh, for the duration of the war. The Germans moved swiftly, however, and by the end of November in 1941, virtually all of the Ukraine was under their control. So people might say, well, was he fighting against Russia in the Ukraine prior? Well, if we go back to this statement from the blog, a blog by associations of its veteran called Combatant News in Ukrainian includes an autobiography entry by the person who was honored at uh, the House of Commons, that says he volunteered to join the division in 1943. So two years after Germany invaded the Ukraine. Which again, fought against Russia. Several photographs of him during the war were in this blog. Captions say pictures show him uh, during artillery training in Munich in December of 1943 and in Newhammer, uh, Poland the site of uh, another bad guy from WW2's visit. This is very disturbing. This is what a basic Google search will give you. So if any conservative MPs, um, again, this should have struck a ragged flag as soon as it's mentioned, if you know your basic history, he fought against the Russians in World War II. You can find this information, this blog, with a basic Google search prior, I should mention, to all of this erupting in the House of Commons. And many photos. And articles written by the person who was honored. It's very disturbing. It's very disturbing. Now, in the House of Commons today, we've seen Karen Gould standing up. Uh, again, if you watch the live stream, we go more in depth, but there's a slip. Because as the blame was shifted and as people pushed back saying, hey, look, uh, Anthony Rota can't go down for this. It's the responsibility of the government. Uh, my question before this House of Commons stream was, how do you get this close to the prime minister and not have security background checks that they don't have any idea who you are? Um, I'll state the same thing I stated when I did my live stream, in case you missed it. When How the Prime Minister Stole Freedom took off, I was invited to the House of Commons as a guest in October of 2022, so last year. Now, I was there for the POEC. I was there to support Tamara Leach as a friend and hang out for a few days, but I also took the time to take up the Conservative Party on their invitation to uh, spend some time at the House of Commons and meet several members of the Conservative Party, sign some books, take some photos, and uh, kind of uh, be honored for what I did in a private session. Now. As I went into the House of Commons, I had to fill out all of my information, and a background check was done. Um, I will also state that I paid for that trip. That trip was not covered by the Conservative Party, um, so I certainly do not owe them any form of flattery here. Um, while the meetings were great, it was nice to sit and hear um, appreciation for the work I've done. I can assure you that as I sat in the gallery, uh, I was about 15 to 20 feet away from Justin Trudeau in terms of where I was in the gallery to where he was sitting below me. And 
I'd met with Melissa Lanceman the night prior to my visit to question period. Now, as I sat in question period, Melissa Lanceman noticed me, gave me a nod and a smile, and then motioned to Pierre that I was up top. Now, Pierre was very uh, excited that him and I were going to get an opportunity to meet and have a discussion. Uh, of course, he leaned forward with a smiling wave, and Justin Trudeau couldn't help but notice. And as he turned around and looked at my face, that was when I realized he knew more than just about the book's existence. Because as soon as Justin Trudeau saw my face, he got up, grabbed his things, and left during question period. Now, I boiled it down to happenstance and said, maybe that's coincidence. Um, surely he can't know who I am. And when I met with conservatives, I was guaranteed the man had a file on me. So out of all the people Justin Trudeau meets, he knew my face. And as question period went on, there were several others in the gallery that were recognized by the House Speaker and applauded by the House of Commons at the end of that session. Um, I certainly was not amongst that crowd. And as I went down into uh, the media area, uh, as I met with conservative leaders, including Pierre Polyev, I was told, um, we, we're going to take photos, but we can't take any photos of you with your book. We can't acknowledge what it is you're doing here because um, politics and, and the way the media eats it up and portrays things. And I had to say, yeah, I understand that. I get it. Um, I, I fully understand how this works. So keep in mind, as an author of a mock children's book, the House of Commons was well aware of who I was. I can guarantee you they knew who this gentleman was. And of course, uh, Karen, uh, Karen Gould letting it slip here that he was in fact vetted. So let's, let's take a listen. When it comes to everyone that was invited to Parliament, of course that vetting happened. So that vetting happened. Now, what Kian doesn't keep on this video is right after she says this, and you can go back and watch our stream because we covered this in full. Uh, what she says right after is, well, he was vetted. However, the Speaker of the House introduced this person. Therefore, the onus is on him. It has nothing to do with the Liberal Party. But the problem with that admission is what you're saying is, is that the Liberal Party was aware of this man's history and yet still applauded him, met with him, and had him on the floor at the House of Commons. Karen Gould, of course, taking a very prominent photo with him, as well as the Speaker of the House, Anthony Rota. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then constantly throughout this session of CPAC, uh, prior to question period, and also during question period, and we're going to get into that with Pierre, um, came out and said, oh, let's not politicize this. Let's not make this a big deal. It's a very big deal. It's a disgusting set of events. Um, and while Justin Trudeau went into hiding, Pierre Polyev, of course, um, coming out and trying to play damage control and uh, make his point. And let's let's go through this this video. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the prime minister, because it, indeed it is the prime minister's sole responsibility to guarantee the diplomatic success of major world leaders who come to this country. It is the prime minister whose government is responsible for both security and diplomatic vetting of everyone that comes in close proximity of a foreign leader on Canadian soil, particularly a foreign leader who is at war. The government has now admitted that they vetted everyone who was in attendance uh, that day. Will the Prime Minister apologize for having vetted this individual and letting him come anyway? Mr. Speaker, like all members of this chamber, I am incredibly disappointed in the fact that uh, this individual was invited, as you yourself, Mr. Speaker, have confirmed by you, was recognized in the gallery. I found out, just like every other member in this House at that time, that this individual was present. Uh, this is deeply embarrassing for us as parliamentarians, as Canadians, and it is something that I think all of us take extremely seriously, and I would ask my honourable colleagues not to politicise this moment. Mr. Speaker. So don't politicize the moment. Don't point out this, this, this travesty that's taken place. The Prime Minister is responsible. He is in Ottawa today. He can get on his feet and answer for his massive diplomatic right. embarrassment yeah. and shame. Stand up. That minister admitted that the government vetted every single person that was here for the speech. That now, I, I want to touch on that really quick before I forget my point here. Now, again, I apologize, folks. This is going to be a long video. Um, 
you have to admit that most of these people should have been vetted. In fact, everybody should have been vetted, as Pierre says. What you have to remember about that day, even if it's a 98-year-old person sitting in that House of Commons, Zelensky was in the House of Commons. And if you're telling me that security tensions weren't at their highest level to make sure that no threats were in that building, again, we did a basic Google search and found photos of this man's past. You're telling me they didn't know about this? They didn't know who this person was? Hogwash. That was the job of the government, which has an entire security and diplomatic apparatus set up for that purpose. Will he finally take responsibility for his latest embarrassment and apologize to Canadians for this massive attack? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as a descendant of Jewish Holocaust survivors. Now, I love how she mentions that. It's this is typical liberal jargon that it's, oh, Mr. Speaker, as as a descendant of Jewish Holocaust survivors. So don't blame me. I'm a victim here. So I'm going to remind everybody of my victim card before I lay into the nonsense answer I'm about to give you. I am personally very hurt by the fact that this chamber recognized this individual. And I am sure that everyone feels the same way in this chamber. The Parliamentary Protective Service had the appropriate screening in place to ensure the security of last Friday's event, and that is what I was referring to, Mr. Speaker. But what I can continue to say is that we all must take this seriously. It is the job of the Government of Canada, the Privy Council Office, which is the Prime Minister's personal department, the Prime Minister's security forces in the RCMP, to vet every single person that comes within proximity of a high-profile right. foreign war leader who is involved in a very difficult conflict right now, it would be the job of the Prime Minister to protect that foreign leader from this massive embarrassment. If the Prime Minister failed to have vetting in place, then that in itself is a massive act of incompetence. Will he take responsibility and apologize for that? Mr. Speaker, I would again ask the Leader of the Opposition to not politicize this issue. Yeah, don't he politicize. knows just as well as everyone else in this chamber that the decision to invite this individual was yours, Mr. Speaker, and yours alone, that you did not... So see right there when she says yours and yours alone, she's again throwing him under the bus so that the blame is off of them. This is typical Liberal tactics. It's, oh, Mr. Speaker, can you please admit this was all your fault so that they'll leave us alone? Inform the government or the Ukrainian delegation that you were inviting him or that you would recognize him. You made that public yesterday. The leader of the opposition knows that, and I would ask that he sticks to the facts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If the Prime Minister is so proud of how he conducted himself, he would be on the floor in the House of Commons today. That's right. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are sick and tired of a Prime Minister who never takes responsibilities That's for right. the things that happen, happen under his watch, whether it's the record high inflation or interest rates or the doubling of housing costs or the constant international embarrassments. He always finds someone else to throw under the bus. Right. Are you that person? I mean, that pretty much says everything we need to know, but... As I digress and as we try to bring this video, this very long video to a close, ladies and gentlemen, um, and again, my apologies, but again, I want to make sure I've got it all that I, that I wanted to cover and that you guys have the full story, that this is not only embarrassing for Canada, and it's not only horrible for us as a country moving forward, but I question, again, I'm not smearing people, but questioning how do all constituents of the House of Commons sit uh, and applaud somebody when little words and phrases like fighting against the Russians in World War II does not set off some form of a red flag. Um, I'm anxious as this continues to go on uh, and will continue to unfold to get hopefully some form of an explanation from those that feel that they're exempt from uh, judgment as this moves forward. And I'm going to be curious to see what happens when Justin Trudeau eventually stops hiding and comes back to Parliament. We've seen it with 
Uh, his statement earlier yesterday where he came out again very somber saying, oh, we're going to have to deal with this and we're sorry and um, distraction, distraction, distraction. So um, I'm going to wrap it up there, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think, um, what you guys think about what's happening and everything else. Uh, because again, I certainly don't want to tell you how to feel, but let me know what you guys think of this entire situation and how this was handled. If it's your first time here, I hope this very lengthy video has earned your subscription. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Join our small fringe minority that's very rapidly expanding into a fringe majority. We're about to hit 10,000 subs. Uh, hopefully by the end of October. I would really love to see that. So join us. Turn on your bell for notifications. Join us every Sunday here on the channel at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time where we go live and hang out and discuss everything that's going on, everything that's supposed to be reported on for the next week and uh, chat with the community. It's always a great time. I hope to see some new faces in there. I always love chatting with my community. I hope to see you guys there and that you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one.